Hello, everyone. I'm Han Yu from Alibaba. Um, today, I'm glad to be here to talk about Project Lumnix and show you why and how dynamic scheduling should be employed in LLM inference serving. Lumnix is a joint effort by interns and colleagues from Alibaba. Let me begin with showing how LLMs are being served today from a cluster perspective. LLM services are typically deployed as multiple instances of the model running inside a certain inference engine with a request dispatcher top routing the incoming requests to the instances. Um, for the inference engine layer, we have seen a lot of systems tailored for LLMs, including those you've just heard of in the previous talks. And this system shows superior performance inside a single instance. For the dispatcher, people are still using um, policies or scheduling systems inherited from the era of traditional DNS, but not designed for LLMs. But the problem is that um, LLMs are different and require new design philosophy for the scheduling layer. The first characteristic of LLM is that workloads are heterogeneous. Um, LLMs are universal models in the sense that the same model can work for different tasks with um, context-specific inputs provided. So that means LLMs can have diverse applications and therefore heterogeneous requests. First, um, requests will have different input and output lengths. Um, consider a simple intuitive example that you want to use an LLM to summarize an article or to um, write an article from a simple prompt or to polish an article you've just written. So these requests will have drastically different ranges of input and output lengths. Another aspect is latency SLOs. For example, um, interactive applications like chatbots or personal assistants would expect lower latencies than offline analysis tasks like summarize an article. Another real product example is that OpenAI introduced a subscription plan called ChatGPT+, which promises faster responses, namely lower latencies. The heterogeneity of requests becomes more challenging um, when combined with another characteristic, um, which I believe you have been familiar with after the previous talks, uh, namely the unpredictable autoregressive execution. During the autoregressive execution, the final output lengths are not known a priori, which also come with the, the GPU memory demands for KV caches that's, that dynamically grow with the sequences. So state-of-the-art systems use page detention for uh, dynamic memory allocation for KV caches and combines it with preemptive scheduling. Because, uh, you know, if you cannot know the final KV cache sizes in the beginning, then you might have to preempt certain requests when you run off the memory. These characteristics introduce a series of scheduling challenges that affect the, the performance and quality of aligned services. The first is performance isolation. So preemptions are inevitable when you use dynamic memory allocation, and they can cause poor tail latencies and SLO violations because the preempted requests will have to go through an, another round of queuing. Even without preemptions, the requests in a batch also have performance in interference to each other. So obviously, we need load balancing, to, um, load balancing across insta instances to mitigate such issues. But the point is, load balancing via the one-shot dispatching could be suboptimal because you cannot know the final output lengths in the beginning. So uh, that means we require continuous load balancing even after the requests are dispatched. Is that enough? No. Load balancing also means memory fragmentation across instances because we tend to spread the cluster's free memory space across multiple instances. Um, actually, this is a classic spreading versus packing trade-off in scheduling problems. Fragmentation could lead to worse queuing delays, especially for the requests with long inputs, because a large space on one instance is needed for accommodating the KV cache of the whole prompt. To visualize this, we did an experiment with four instances using a spreading policy for request dispatching. We plot the memory demand of the head of line queuing request on each instance against the total free memory space in a cluster. For most of the time span, 
the total memory space can satisfy um, the queuing requests on at least three instances. But they're still queuing because the free space is fragmented. This shows that beyond load balancing, we also need the ability of defragmentation. A third challenge is to satisfy different latency SLOs of requests. Existing systems treat all requests equally, where urgent requests could easily be interfered by normal ones. For example, they may experience excessive queuing delays or performance interference when co-located with normal requests. So we also need request priorities to systematically differentiate, differentiate their SLOs. OK, in a nutshell, the major takeaway here is that LLMs are inherently multi-tenant and dynamic, serving heterogeneous and unpredictable workloads on multiple instances. This behavior is actually quite different from traditional DNNs, where the requests are mostly homogeneous and the execution is deterministic and stateless. But luckily, this behavior is not new in modern operating systems or distributed systems. And in these systems, we have um, context switching, we have process migration, and many other similar approaches to deal with such multi-tenancy and dynamism related problems. So how about LLMs? Our answer to this question is Lomnix a system that features continuous rescheduling of LLM requests across multiple model instances. It is combined with the initial dispatching of requests and instance auto-scaling. We show that rescheduling is a powerful weapon in various scheduling scenarios. The first is rescheduling for load balancing, well, continuous load balancing um, to reduce preemptions and interference. Um, which is complementary to the dispatching time load balancing. To tame the trade-off between load balancing and, and fragmentation, uh, Lamnix also reschedules requests away from an instance to create free space for defragmentation to reduce queuing delays. The third scenario is rescheduling requests away from high-priority requests to further reduce performance interference and accelerate the execution of high priority requests. And finally, um, Lamnix also reschedules requests to saturate or drain out instances more quickly during auto scaling. So you might have heard of rescheduling and or migration of LLM requests as Yao just introduced in serverless LLM and I believe that this also shows the value and potential of rescheduling. Well, our aim is instead to realize fully dynamic scheduling and make rescheduling the norm, not exception in LLM serving. To this end, we need to accomplish a series of design goals. We need to maximize the efficiency of the rescheduling so that we could reschedule much more aggressively and more frequently. We also need a high scalability of a cluster level scheduler and a scheduling policy that maximizes the scheduling benefits of rescheduling in various scheduling goals. I'll first introduce the live migration mechanism. So the major concern in, um, with rescheduling is the KV cache states. You could either recompute or copy the KV cache to the new instance, but this approach will introduce downtimes to the rescheduled requests um, for the recomputing or memory copying, and also performance overhead due to the re redundant computation of re um, recomputing. You know, this recomputing would need another prefuel computation round on the destination instance, which will block the original batch on the destination ins instance. So I guess this is the key difference between Lamnix and serverless LLM. Well, more importantly, these downtimes and overheads will increase with the sequence lengths. But by contrast, um, Lamnix's live migration mechanism has near zero downtime and overhead by design. The inspiration is virtual machine live migration. When you want to migrate a VM, you keep the source VM online, during which you iteratively copy the dirty pages, namely the pages got changed, to the destination VM. When all the dirty pages get synced, then the source VM stops, the migration is committed, and the new VM becomes online. 
To apply this technique to LLM serving, we can liken the VMs to the requests and the memory pages to KV blocks. Now the question is, what are the dirty pages? The key characteristic of LLM inference here is that KV caches are append only. That means there are no dirty pages or dirty blocks, and there are only incremental blocks that are appended to the cache as the, as the decoding proceeds. The live migration in Lumnix works in multiple stages where we iteratively copy the incremental blocks um, to the, uh, uh, generated in the last stage. Um, for the first stage, they are blocks generated before the migration until we reach a stage that only produces a minimal number of new blocks. And so we, um, uh, namely the stage N in the graph, so we will, res we will suspend the request, copy the last blocks, and resume the re request on the destination instance. So this way, the migration downtime is that only that of the final copying, which is near zero and constant to the sequence length. With live migration being the mechanism foundation, I will next show you how Lumnix improves the scalability and scheduling benefits of migration. Continuous rescheduling across instances also implies higher scheduling pressure than traditional schedulers, which could be a bottleneck if implemented in a centralized manner. Lumnix uses, uses a distributed scheduling architecture that employs a global scheduler for cross-instance scheduling decisions while using a set of distributed schedulers named Lumlets co-located with the model instances to handle intra-instance scheduling. In this architecture, the global scheduler makes all the scheduling decisions only based on the memory loads of the instances reported by the Lumlets. It does not need to watch the status of every single running request, which further reduces its pressure. The key enabler of our global scheduler not caring about the specific requests is our scheduling policy, which translates the various scheduling goals into a simple instance load metric. We achieve this with uh, an abstraction called the virtual usage. The, intu the intuition is that the various goals are all controlling the loads of the instances. You either balance them or you create more free space on certain instances. They can actually be unified into load balancing because for creating free space, um, we, can, we can simply assume a virtual load on that instance to make it virtually overloaded, then the load balancing policy will be triggered to migrate some run requests to other instances. So Lamnix uses the load balancing policy based on virtual usages and define the rules for setting virtual usages in different scenarios. For example, when we have a queuing request, Lumnix assumes a positive virtual usage of it, although the physical usage is zero, so that we can migrate other requests away, uh, which in effect is defragmentation. And this approach also works for other scenarios, and you can refer to our paper for details. Lumnix is implemented as a scheduling layer on top of multiple instances of VLLM, a state-of-the-art inference engine. We evaluate Lumnix on a cluster with 16 A10 GPUs using the popular Lama models, and we use two real datasets of ChatGPT4 conversations for the sequence lengths, and also generated power law distributions to represent more diverse applications. We compare the serving performance of Lumnix with Infast, a system that implements explicit load balancing for dispatching. On the shared GPT and burst GPT datasets, Lumnix achieves up to 2.2 times and 5.5 times gains for mean and P99 first token latencies via defragmentation to reduce queuing delays. Lumnix also shows up to 1.3 times shorter P99 per token generation latencies by reducing preemptions with migration. On average, Lumnix reduces latency penalties caused by preemptions by 73% across, um, across these experiments. Um, due to the time limit, I will refer you to our paper for other results like a, a benchmark for the migration efficiency and other traces, priorities, and auto-scaling. Okay, to conclude, we believe that dynamic workloads need dynamic scheduling, and LLMs are no exception. We built Lumnix exactly following this principle. 
The design of Lumnix draws lessons from conventional systems wisdom, including definitions of classic scheduling goals in the new context of LLM serving, implementation of the rescheduling with the live migration mechanism, and fully continuous dynamic rescheduling exploiting the migration. Combined, these techniques deliver better latencies and efficiency of LLM serving. Lumnix is open source and welcome to take a try. Okay, thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions.